Uh, guys, if you're on Amazon Solar Tribe tonight, you have many reasons to rejoice. Um, not the least of which is the Kansas City Chiefs won over the New Orleans Saints. So um, that's a great, you know, tick that one off. That's a great reason to rejoice. Another reason to rejoice is I have um, an, a, an amazing seller with us tonight. And most of you know him as Taco Man or Pokemon Man. Um, but we're going to go a little deeper tonight, and you're going to get to know this uh, very, very valuable human being, and you're going to get to hear an amazing um, result of some of his efforts this year. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Um, so tonight, please welcome to Amazon Seller Tribe webinar, our very own, and we're all so glad Gay was actually able to capture him out in the wild. You know, I went on a, a safari and actually literally found him living in his native elements, captured him in the wild and brought him into Amazon Seller Tribe. And he has been a joy, an absolute joy, um, our very own Jameson Philippi. So that <laughs> I need to have one of those emojis, you know, that comes <laughs> over my face, you know, and all the fireworks. Comes <laughs> off. But Jameson, we love you and, and thank you, thank you. I you love you guys too. having you in Amazon yeah. Seller Tribe. So glad uh, that you're with us and you've provided a lot of value. You know, I, I think sometimes we have the tendency um, to take ourselves a little too seriously and and then you're the kind of guy that walks in the room and just tears up everything, you know? And so we're all like going, okay, no, we're not, we don't have to take ourselves seriously after all. You know, we can have a good time. We can uh, enjoy the journey and uh, you're helping us do that in Amazon Seller Tribe. But then there's times when we need to know there's something deeper, something more that makes um, each other tick. And it's those uh, deeper things, those um, maybe those trying places where we have found great value in each other as members of the same tribe. And um, so we want to we want to talk about that tonight, but we're going to celebrate, too. But we're going to talk about that and uh, give you a chance, if you will, because there are people in Amazon Seller Tribe that just don't know uh, very much about you. And I want them to hear uh, down deep. So we're going to start with in the beginning when you were born at an early age, I might add, and um, take us back um, to Jameson growing up. And um, we're going to go from there. Of course, of course. Um, yeah, um, I was born. Uh, my mom um, and my dad were not together. They weren't married, um, so I was raised by a single mom. Uh, we grew up on the east side of St. Paul um, in a pretty a pretty rough area. Um, you know, like we grew up like, uh, um, I mean, in a, in a very diverse neighborhood. So I got to see everything from all different aspects, all different, you know, cultures and races. And I got, you know, seen just, you know, I was raised a lot different than most people. and. You know, um, you know, we kind of had grew up with that poverty mindset, so we kind of grew up a little bit different, and uh, we were on welfare. And my mom didn't work a lot, you know, growing up. Um, like she had jobs here and there. Let's just let's just pause there because um, let, 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 let's just let's just pause there just a minute. Um, I think we used that term, you know, poverty mindset. We've used it now um, for a couple of years, where people don't really even understand what that means. Um, and unless you grew up poor, you know, Gary and I talk about grew, grew up poor, but our kind of growing up poor, at least you could get subsistence, you know, from the ground and the animals and the farm and the hunting and, you know, that sort of thing. And urban growing up poor is a different kind of poor, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it does come with a mentality, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, of course. Yeah. Hey, flesh that out for us and say, you know, because you were saying your mom didn't work very much. 
So there's a lot of things that go with us. Take us into those moments there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, my mom definitely like took advantage of the system. We were on welfare and, you know, she was getting child support, I think, growing up for my dad a little bit. And um, she was totally capable of working, but like I grew up seeing that. So I thought that was normal, you know, because in and and, and where we grew up, that that's how most parents were, you know, single moms or it was abusive situations right. with mom and dad right and you know for the most part everybody not everybody but you know a lot of people in the neighborhood they're all in welfare and the majority you know a lot of our friends were taking advantage of the system it was just how we were all raised and that was normal you know like if you go to the store and steal a candy bar like we'd steal candy like we didn't you know like we didn't right. know any but like you know we knew it was wrong in our hearts but we would still do it because that's everybody just, else was doing it exactly. this was like a cultural acceptance right like, yeah like something's wrong with you if you don't do those things yeah. and they just, like, treat you like a square and then they'll punk you and get beat up and right so like we just grew up with a different mentality and uh, my mom you know pretty much the majority of my childhood was in and out of abusive relationships um you know I used to wake up in the middle of the night to her getting beat on and you know the, the being woken up at you know, one, two in the morning of her getting punched and like waking up those screams, like those sudden screams, you wake up like that, that was like a normal thing to see those wow. things growing up. And, you know, her boyfriends would get arrested, restraining orders, they would kick down the door sometimes and, you know, police would come and like my mom would like, you know, sometimes my mom's boyfriends wouldn't hit her, but she would lie to the police and say they did. And she would make me lie to the police too. So like I learned to lie to the police when I was like nine, eight years old. Like, yeah, he came at her with a knife. You know what I'm saying? That, you know, things just so he would get arrested because that's what my mom wanted me to do. Right. So I just grew up totally different. And um, it was, you know, the majority, I lived on the east side of St. Paul for like 25 years, almost 30 years about. Um, and it was just completely different. You know, when I turned 18, you know. So it was, uh, it was really kind of a survival sort of living. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, was, you, you know, there was there was not a lot of future talk. It was mm -hmm. just, you know, surviving today, this week, this month, getting to the next rent, you know, get getting through the next rent cycle, ever how you could, right? So very subsistence level living. Yeah, it was yeah, it was like that the whole and then when I turned 18, you know, or as I was, you know, I would my mom would start getting credit cards and she would go to, you know, a I think it's her burgers. I don't think it's around anymore. You know, kind of like a Macy's store. And she would get these store credit cards, max them out buying clothes and gift cards and stuff. And then she would go and sell them or she would like buy Christmas coats and then go return them without the receipt. So she could get cash. Like, cause back then you could get cash without, right. you know, and so right. I learned to do that too. So when I fresh, when I turned 18, I signed up for every credit card I could Right. And that, you know, that royally, you know, screwed me, you know, in right, the evening, you know, right. you know, they're getting these, like, you know, I got, a, I remember I, my first credit card was a Best Buy credit card for $200 limits. And this is back when Blu-ray players came out. I went and bought a $179 Blu-ray player gotcha. and then I brought it to the pawn shop and they gave me 50 bucks cash for it. And I thought I made $50. Oh man. And I left that card alone for like eight years, uh, maybe like, sorry, not eight, maybe like six, seven years. Right. And Seven years later, that was like a three thirty five hundred three thousand dollar card right. that I had to pay off. Right. Um, and I did that with multiple cards, and yeah, right. it was a, definitely a different different way of growing up. You know, I think um, I think you know when we, that, and that is called the poverty mindset. You know, it's a poverty mentality. We have that a lot here in the the uh, rural areas of uh, our region you know there's a lot of hills and hollers where the people have just kind of scammed the system you know and uh, colleen when she was in the school district she worked for had to deal with that a lot and it just becomes a way of life but there's always i think there's always going to be uh in the middle of those uh chaotic moments in the middle of those crises moments and and lifestyles there's always going to be um kind of a, a, a pull to do something different, a pull to think a little differently. Um, but you still had to hit rock bottom before that was going to take place. So mm -hmm. fast forward um, and, uh, and tell us about you came to some real crisis times in your life. Um, yeah. Um, 
yeah, you know, growing up it was just, you know that, and then you know I got a little bit older, and then you know obviously I, I was like working then. I started going to college um, at a community college, and um, you know, and again this was a normal thing. You know, kids are doing drugs and getting high, and you know, drinking and stuff like that, and you know, I was, I worked as a waiter at Buffalo Wild Wings. That was like an extremely normal thing. Like everybody, you know, a lot of people there are doing drugs and, you know, I, I would try things from time to time. And, um, I had this friend that worked at TGI Fridays across the street and we used to play World of Warcraft together. He introduced me to Percocet, a pain, painkiller. Gotcha. And the first time I took that, that was like one of the most amazing feelings I had ever felt in my life. And gotcha. mentally I got hooked on it instantly. And yeah. that, literally spiraled my life out of control like I lost everything evicted from my apartments in rehab four times um yeah I was hooked on them for for about on and off for about three to three three years or so right um right um and, and you, you use the term that you were mentally hooked on them it's like um like there was there was something in your mind that kept calling for that and um, that that's that's a cycle that is not easy to break. Um, you have to start getting new thoughts in there, <laughs> but it's hard to do when the brain is already drugged. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, how did you climb out of that pit of addiction? And the reason I've asked you, if you don't mind me saying so, the the reason I've asked you to go deeper with us tonight before we get to that uh, celebratory moment is because I really don't want people to miss the full value of what uh, makes you such a great gift to Amazon Seller Tribe. And for me, that is because you really are an overcomer. And I think about those who maybe toying with addiction now, whether it's alcohol or drugs or um, other life besetting behaviors that are beginning to separate them from friends and family and their own business. And I'm hoping that they'll see this and they'll say, wait a minute, um, Jameson did something different so I could do something different. And I love that power that comes with the testimony because you went to the bottom you didn't stay there how did you get out of there um i honestly only got clean because i didn't have any other bridges to burn um i got evicted from my apartment uh, at the time i was dating a girl uh, we went and moved back with my mom and i stole money from her she kicked us out. We went to go live with her dad and we started pawning his jewelry and he didn't find out for, you know, four or five months, he wouldn't notice. And eventually he found out that his rings were missing and like other things were missing. And so then, you know, and I had gotten fired from Buffalo Wild Wings um, and um, I didn't have anything left. I had no money coming in and I couldn't afford to get high anymore. I was spending, you know, anywhere from two, three, four, five hundred dollars $500 a day on drugs. And so we went back with my mom, I, you know, and to this day, like, um, like I had, when we went back to go, you know, lick our wounds and go apologize to my mom, I had my girlfriend at the time go knock on the door because I was too scared. I was too ashamed right. to go knock. Right. Um, and so I had her go knock on the door and then they came back together like 20 minutes later um and my mom was crying and <laughs> to this day this still like haunts me right. um she said that when my girlfriend at the time knocked on the door she opened and my girlfriend was crying right and she said she thought i was dead uh. and to that day like that's still like something that sticks with me like really hard and like i know i don't ever like to that like i don't ever have any like inkling to do drugs again like I just that's like one thing that will stick with me where I'll never pick up drugs again like um right. and I got you know we stayed with her for like a week I ended up going to rehab um and then got clean and um I, I haven't touched him since and that was in like the summer of 2011 um oh. 
So I got clean and, you know, for a few years, I didn't do anything with my life. Um, I just played World of Warcraft and mooched off my girlfriend who worked full time. And I didn't, I was, a, you know, a, you know, I don't want to call myself a loser, but I was, you know, mooching off of her and right. not doing anything, you know, of value to the world or to her or to me or. Right. Um, you sure weren't living up to any of your potential. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Um, so now you're just kind of floating, you know, you're yeah. free from the besetting behavior of drugs, but mm -hmm. you haven't latched on to life yet, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's almost like you sort of let go of death, but you just didn't get a hold of life yet. Where was that place where you finally just got a hold of life? Um, things in Minnesota at the time when I was clean to were toxic. Uh, my mom ended up getting addicted to pills too. Um, and she was a gambling addict. And, you know, well, I, when I, I was, so I was living around that still, even after I was sober and it was just a very toxic situation. Um, right. and you know, I was trying to find a job then and I couldn't, like, I just had no, you know, no motivation. Like I just, you know, like when you grow through that and you're living through that, like you don't, ever think you're going to amount to doing anything good and right you know, growing up with a poverty mindset you always think it's somebody else's fault while you're where you're at so mm -hmm. I had that in my mind that it was everybody else's fault it wasn't right me. it's the government's fault it's your landlord's fault it's mm -hmm. the boss's fault it's the mayor's fault it's the cop's fault right and it, but there is a point where you have to sort of arrest the man in the mirror mm -hmm. yeah you have to say, wait a minute, the, here's the guy living this life. It happens to be me. Mm -hmm. So tell me about uh, getting to that place. Um, I didn't like fully like grasp that of taking, you know, responsibility or, you know, owning up to the majority of the bad things that happened were my fault. You know, I put myself in those situations. I made the dumb decisions. I hung out with those types of people. You know, I was one of those people, like it was my fault. And most people don't want to, you know, they, it's, it's, it's a hard thing to admit, like, mm -hmm. wow, this last few years of me, you know, messing around, that was me, that was my fault, that wasn't nobody else's. And um, so, and, so hey, I'm sorry, just let me, let me, let me say this, guys, it takes a, a huge amount of humility to say what he's saying here. It was my fault. You know, I was the one that was messing this up. And that's the power that Jameson has found in himself when he got a hold of Jameson. And then suddenly you find that it's not all valuelessness. There's something valuable still rolling around in there somewhere. So go ahead and talk about how you started pulling yourself up to those thinking places where you're like, I might do something different. Um, I didn't actually start like taking full on responsibility for that type of stuff until, you know, like a few years ago. Um, and it was, you know, I just, you know, being cycled with this way of thinking your whole life, it, it you just don't notice it. And, and um, I went to a Tony Robbins event um, two and a half years ago, two years ago. And, you know, once I started diving into self-development and like, you know, looking at things from a different angle and like, and like, and in, in diving into like different books and things like that is like when I really realized like, holy crap, like this was my fault the entire time. It was me. It wasn't nobody else. It wasn't these, all these women that I dated that were toxic relationships when it's like, this is like attracts like, if you're a toxic person, right. you're probably attract a toxic mate. And right. then you're to come together and do toxic crap to each other. Right. Right. And each person blames the other person when right. it was like both of us, like we, I sucked. I take responsibility for my part. Right. And it was me the entire time. And, right. you know, so like, I just, you know, indulged in, in self-development the last couple of years I stayed single for you know like two years and like was like all right I'm not gonna date I don't want right. to you know right. don't you think you had to um find out who really Jameson was you know Jameson without these external factors and forces James who really is Jameson 
You had to find him, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, and that's uh, that I didn't like. What what is definitely like where is um in two thousand nineteen in January two thousand nineteen um and the, and uh, I think I might have said this in the last one um I had I was just getting out of a toxic relationship I had just got done coming back from from New York um and that was you know in New York I was I you know drove to George Washington Bridge and I was going to end it and I went back to Minnesota after that. And I was talking to a friend, he um, had just had a kid a year prior and he, you know, we were talking and he was telling me about, he's like, when you have a kid, the love, it's like a new level love that you experience that he's like, I can't even explain it. And then he like, like flipped it on me and he was like, Jameson, do you love yourself? Mm. And I didn't know what to say. And I said, I I, I don't know. Cause I didn't know. I didn't know that that was even a thing. Come on. And um, come on. And so that was like something that stuck with me for a couple weeks. Um, and that was, you know, like I started like dieting and losing weight a little bit. And like I was going through that phase there for, you know, from when I got back from New York in January and in February. And then like around like Valentine's Day of last year. So in 2020, um, I went and looked up my ex-girlfriend on Instagram because I was like getting into a spot where I was missing her and I was going to hit her up. And we had officially been broken up for like a month and a half, two, you know, like two months um, now. And she was already with somebody else. And like that just destroyed me. Like we were yeah. together, you know, for like a year and a half. And then right. we, within and a month or so, she's with somebody else. She's already in a relationship, like posting pictures of them on Instagram. And I, like, like that yeah. feeling just yeah. increased your feeling me. of valuelessness again. Yes, it destroyed me. Um, and after that, I was just going like that night, I hit up one of my friends I'd met at Tony Robbins, who was going through a similar thing with the, his ex-wife. And we were talking on the phone for like two hours. And before he let me go, he said, Jameson, like, you know, I, I want to give you this book, you know, and um, he recommended this book um, called um, Love Yourself Like Your Life Depends On It. Mm. Um, in that book, it changed my life. Like, wow, you know, that is probably one of the most influential books I've ever read in my entire life. And that book teaches you how to love yourself. Fully. Love yourself like your life depends on it. You know what's so interesting about that too is if you you if you think about the thought love yourself like your life depends on which it does, and is so important. But what about also the lives that are connected to you, people you haven't even met yet, that that the the d d design of life is that they're going to be influenced by your story to take another step, to live another day, to break an addiction. You know, it's like when, once you start loving yourself and once you start getting a hold of the truth of how valuable you are, you realize that your life can impact others as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say that Amazon Seller Tribe would be a much um, uh, a less wealthy place without you. And so I am so glad that George Washington Bridge did not win that night. I'm so glad that you went back to Minnesota and so glad you opened that book and you heard something else. Now you continued to feed your mind going forward with new thoughts, breaking poverty mentality, breaking mindsets, breaking devaluing thinking and you continually have to have to do that medicate that way don't you mm -hmm. yes yeah huge um yeah if i'm not doing that stuff then i almost like fall into depression or and that's when like anxiety and depression and all these other you know mental wires get like it's just not you know right. so I'm constantly, you know, in the sense like you're an Amazon, you're constantly feeding the beast. Like I'm constantly right. feeding myself. Right. Right. I think, you know, I, I relate a little bit to some of your story, only that, you know, for, for those of you, some, some of you already heard and you're tired of me saying it, but you know, that uh, um, my father was a, a violent man and grew up in a, a violent household. And that, that uh, took years and years and years to break the, the thought that any minute the door is going to break in and 
the beatings are going to start. And there is kind of a, a PTSD that comes with that, doesn't it, Jameson? Yeah. So you probably, um, you know, I don't know if you've ever been diagnosed, but um, uh, you may struggle with that, you know, and part of that is depression. The other part of it is anxiety. You know, you're always on high alert. It's going to get bad now, <laughs> right? Or, oh, it's so bad, I can't even get up, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's a place in you now that has learned to not stop. You just take another step and you just keep going forward. Tell me where you find that power, where you find that uh, ability to do that now. I guess it, it um, one thing, this is kind of like a weird thing to me. I don't know. This is like one thing that always like sticks in my mind and why I like to work hard is that like when I was growing up, I think I was probably, I was in junior high, maybe 13, give or take. Um, we didn't really have, we didn't have any money. And I had, my mom had bought me a t-shirt at Foot Locker, a Reebok t-shirt, you know, for, I don't know, 20 bucks or whatever the t-shirt costs. And we didn't have the receipt for it. I never wore it. We didn't have any money. And she was like, hey. We go to Foot Locker, catch the bus to the mall and go return the shirt without the receipt because we didn't have it. And sometimes they would do it and sometimes they wouldn't. And so uh, she gave me 25 cents for the bus. That was all our money. Like uh, we were digging in the couch and we right. found a quarter for the bus. Yeah. And I caught the bus to the mall and went to Foot Locker and went to return the shirt and they wouldn't return it. Mm. And I didn't have any money to get home. I was relying on that return to get oh. money to catch the bus back home. Right. And the bus ride is, you know, like a 45 minute bus ride. And so I didn't have any money at all. And so I had to walk home from the mall and it was about a three hour walk. Um, For a 12, and, 13 year old kid. Mm -hmm. And I'm walking down, you know, one street. In a violent urban area. <laughs> yeah. And I'm walking home and, you know, I'm probably walking for about an hour, probably about two hours at this point. And I'm hungry. It's hot. It's, you know, four in the afternoon. It's, you know, it's warm out and I come across a gas station, Super America. Um, and I went to, and, and I, and this is, and I know how all the, all the Super America gas stations back then were like, uh, where you go to pay, they have like, it's like almost like a table. So like stuff falls underneath like right. chains and stuff. So I'm like, right. oh, I'm going to go inside and go grab some change. I'm hungry. I need something to drink. I need some food. Right. Right. And, I, and I went straight up to the gas station. There's a line and everything. And I literally got on my hands and knees and I was digging for change. And I found 27 cents, which was enough to get a cookie because cookies wow. were 25 cents plus tax, 27 wow. cents. And I went and got a cookie. And then I went in the bathroom and drank water out of the faucet. Right. And then I walked the rest of the way home. And that story always sticks with me. Like when I'm outsourcing or, you know, like I always think of that, that I don't ever want to go back to the, you know, I know money, and money's not everything. And, that, and I, I don't, don't want people to take it the wrong way. Like I don't ever want to go be back to being that broke. No, you know, uh, you relate to what, when Gary talks about, you know, that they grew up poor and he didn't like it and he didn't ever want to be poor again. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, those poverty moments can become an impetus to something great if we let it, mm -hmm. or it can be our demise. And um, there's nothing wrong with you. Um, becoming very, very well off, very, very well off, not only avoiding poverty, but to become very, very well off because you already know the value of some of the most critical things. Mm -hmm. Number one is the value of life, the value of you in this life. And then the num number two, you've already learned the value of money. You know that it can't be your God. On the other hand, you know that it can be a tool to some amazing moments in life. Jameson, when did you get the idea to start selling on uh, Amazon or selling on eBay or ever how you got started selling? Um, back in, um, I was doing eBay, you know, I on and off for like four or five years, give or take, before I started Amazon. Um, 
And then I think in 2014, I heard about Amazon. Um, and I remember I saw, I saw, I don't know, I think it might've been on Facebook or something like, you know, sign up for Amazon FBA, get your first month free, you know, the $40 a month fee. Gotcha. They're yeah. like first 30 days free. And gotcha. I was like, I, 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 I had seen it around for a little bit, but I was like, I'm not signing up. I'm not paying, for, I can't afford $40 a month. Like, right. Right, right. And then, and then it was free for 30 days. It took that took away your excuse. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, I tried it. And then I ended up getting like charged still for the $40. Uh-oh. And and this is, you know, back then I was still right. in that mindset. So I called and I was yeah. I was a jerk. Yeah. I felt barely around. I wasn't I was a jerk back then. Yeah, yeah. And I probably was extremely mean to that person, you know, and, and I probably took it out on them. Like it was their fault. My car right. got charged $40. Right. 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 Um, and after that they refunded the money and I swore off Amazon. I'm like, I'm not selling it. Like, this is a ripoff. Like I'm not paying, right. you know, 30% fee, you know, like that was just like, there's no way you can make right. any money, blah, right. blah, 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 blah. Right. And I just like that just really stuck with me for a while. And I just had a very sour taste and I don't know what even made, I don't even, honestly, I can't even remember what made me even try it. Um, I think it was a few months later, um, I did sign up and I actually tried it. Um, and I bought somebody's list actually. This is like probably, there was probably probably the only person on the planet selling a list back then. Right. It was an OA list. I was doing OA and it, that wasn't called OA at the time. And I remember right. I bought some plush toys from disney.com. And then by the time they got to my house and I got them into Amazon, I the think price I had, had tanked. Yeah, I didn't make any money. You know, I'm spending, right. it was like 60 bucks a month on the list and I think I did the list for like two or three months and then I just couldn't afford to do it anymore. Right. And then I just like started just doing like selling the Goodwill stuff. Like a lot of people started, you know, sure, sure, stores sure. and stuff yeah, like that. That's how we started. Right. Yeah. And I did was doing that, you know, and it was, I was having fun because I love, I still to this day, I don't do it anymore, but I love going to the thrift shop. It's yeah, like, it, it's a fun hunt, isn't it? It is. I, that's, I don't, I get so much excitement at the thrift store. <laughs> Yeah. Like looking through all the stuff, you know, I don't yeah. even sell clothes on eBay. Be that one little golden exactly. moment. <laughs> it is. It's, you know, it's like an Easter egg hunt. It you is. Know, yeah. I go to the Goodwill. Like, and um, I think I was just kind of goofing off with Amazon for a few months. And like um, from, I think it was in the summertime up until Black Friday. Um, I didn't, I don't think, I, I want to say I didn't have a bank account. So there was no money coming. It was just right. gotcha. building. And back then, you know, it was super easy. You didn't need all the, all the extras to sign right, up. Right, right, right. And right before Black Friday, I think I had like built up my money to like around $1,100, like from basically the summer to Black Friday, I got 1100 bucks in my Amazon account. And then I finally set up a thing and I actually got my money the morning of Black Friday. Sweet. And I went out and I spent $1,100 on products. I'd never done that in my life. I'd never even, you know, had really had that much money. And right. I went and bought some products. I sent them in and they sold. Boom. And then I just kept going and going. And I think this was the year the Max tow truck came out. So I don't know if you remember oh, that toy. Yes. Oh, yes. Th those were expensive to me back then. You know, they were like, oh, yeah. like 20 bucks, 50 bucks, 60 bucks or something. Yeah. And I was just buying them and sending them in. And I was buying all I could afford. And they were selling as fast as you could get them there. Yeah. And I just, you know, I had a blast that that was probably one of my favorite Q4s, honestly. Like was, that's when I, you know, and after that year was over, like I had like a little bit more money than I had. And, um, and I was still, you know, kind of goofing off with it some and right January, right after that, I had, I went to a target, I was living in Minnesota and I found 400 plus video games there, all 70% off. And they had, it was a, uh, it was like probably about 200 of them were just all randos, but then there was like 200 all the same game Sweet. and it was an uncharted game for the ps3 it was like buy for three sell for like 25 bucks and back then you know you don't know any better so i didn't buy them all like <laughs> you know i think i bought like 50 of them maybe or 40 right. like and I, that was like the deepest i'd ever gone yeah. in my life yeah. and i'm terrified right right and they all sold and right. back then there was no, there wasn't a lot of people doing RA. After they sold, I went back. All the games were still there, <laughs> and so that I cleared them all out. And right. after that, it was just like clearance was just so fun and easy back then. You literally go into store. Right. And, right. It would just like it would be throwing money in the app was where it was really fun, and I was like learning. And 
after that, I just didn't stop. I just kept going with it because it was, and, and then I just kind of slowly built up my knowledge over the years and, you know, started to get involved in the community once there was one, you know, right. there really wasn't one. Exactly. Back then. Right. So, exactly. And when you started, so when did you, uh, when did you meet Taran? When did you, our, our, our Taran, uh, when did you meet Taran and loop <laughs> up with him? Was it in the Amazon space? Yeah, um, I joined, uh, so actually I, I joined a paid Facebook group, I think it might've been in 2015, maybe 14, 14 or 15, uh, I don't remember. But when I joined, it was $100 to join for the year. And I didn't even have the $100, and I couldn't afford it. And my roommate that I was living with in Nashville, he gave me the 100 bucks to join gotcha. the group. And yeah. um and that's where that's um, the best hundred bucks you ever that, spent. You got Torin out of it. I, I did. I did. I would. I would have paid two hundred for that. <laughs> I'll give you three hundred for him now. <laughs> and yeah, that's where I met Torin. I think we were Facebook friends for probably a year, maybe two years. Um, and then I started traveling and doing FBA, and I, you know, wanted to go to New York. I'd never been to New York, and I came to New York. Right. And, I started meeting as many Amazon people as I could. And then I made the drive out to where Torrin lived, which was like three hours away. Right. And I, we, I, I picked him up. We went shopping. I still have the photo. I actually saw it on my phone the other day. And we went and got Taco Bell and we were shopping. <laughs> Doesn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah. And, and the we, rest, as they say, is history. He's yeah, we became good friend. friends after that. And we had started a private chat that we're still in to this day. A pro, we, it was a private label chat, the three of us. Gotcha. And that, gotcha. that was the purpose of it. And um, we were all in it together and he was thrifting then I was thrifting again. And I was like, we were talking the day he found a product at the thrift store that, which kind of led him to the building his private label brand he has now. Exactly. Like I remember I saw him build, you know, it was really cool to Great. see him grow Great. and do that. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. So then, um, I found you and I just sort of trailed around behind you and I wouldn't let you get away. And then at one point, I took, okay, this is how I see it. Now you might've seen it a little differently and that's all right. Cause it's all right for you to be wrong. Um, but I saw you kind of running away and I threw the lasso and it caught both of your feet and down you went. And I went, yeehaw. And I roped you and I hauled you back to Amazon seller tribe. And I said, there folks, I'm giving you something. And poor thing, you got knocked out in that episode, of course. And you, when you came to, you were smack dab right in the middle of some of the greatest folks you've ever met. Wouldn't uh, you yeah. agree? I, yeah. 100%. That's pretty much how 100%. the story goes, isn't it? <laughs> of course. Definitely. Yeah. So now you've been, uh, you've been uh, changing mindsets as you go along because you're moving from the side hustle guy um, to a guy who's building a real business. And this is a whole different kind of mentality. This is a maturity that takes place when money is entrusted to you, right? Mm -hmm. So now you got profits. Profits are being entrusted to you. What do you do with this? Now it's time to build a real business. And over the last uh, couple of years, you've been building um, a real Amazon business. And I want to get to the exciting moment, the moment when the balloons fall from the sky, the confetti goes, the fireworks go, because you just achieved something uh, phenomenal, exciting. I was uh, up with my grandkids a couple of days ago when I saw uh, Nathan Reinerson said something about it. And I was like, what? what you know I'm grabbing my phone i'm like oh, getting ready to text Torrent. and then all of a sudden i see pictures of you guys with rosalind amos and linda nielsen and some others and Torrent saying he's celebrating something and i got super excited i want you to share with the people what happened to you just a couple of days ago um I, uh, for being, on, uh, I've been on Amazon six years and this is the first time ever that I hit a million dollars in a year ever. <laughs> He's a seven figure seller folks. He is a gold lanyard seller and Amazon seller tribe, our very own Jameson Philippi and guys, 
It's not going to be a gold lanyard with tacos around it either. It's going to be a gold lanyard with Pokemon cards, <laughs> the high dollar ones that I don't know the names of, but all going to be labeled up and down his gold lanyard. And he's going to have a big medal on it. And he's going to clank when he walks in the room. People are going to know Jameson Philippi just came in the room when you see his gold lanyard. Jameson, I am so thrilled for you. How does it feel to be a million dollar seller on Amazon? Um, amazing. It, did, it, did you, I mean, when you first started, do you say, hmm, I think I'll just, uh, I'm going to set a goal for myself. I think I'll try to sell a million dollars in one year. No, I was just trying to, you know, buy 99 cent spaghetti. Come on. And all of a sudden you began to transform. you literally began to transform. I love these transformations. I love what has taken place inside of you and what has taken place inside your mind as you're growing in entrepreneurship. And uh, you bring a lot of joy, a lot of value to others. And I will say, guys, in Amazon Seller Tribe, if you had the joy uh, of being in Q4 War Room, you got to see Jameson at work in a major way. He came on powerfully strong with some amazing bolos. And we were whooping and, you know, texting. Gary's like, ah, oh, did you? And then Andy's like, did you see? Oh, Jameson, blah, blah, blah. And we're texting each other behind the scenes. And boy, coming on strong. Look at this. And uh, added such amazing value to Key for a War Room. Um, we were just thrilled. And, and couldn't be more um, grateful to you for the value that you contributed there. Um, for those who didn't get to push the button and be in Q4 War Room, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, it was a, a limited opportunity. Hopefully you can be in next year, but I just look forward to what, what can happen in the future. Jameson, it's been a joy to watch you grow. Thank it's you. just been a joy. You know, I've had you on Facebook now for, a, for three years probably. I think. And just, you know, even to see the times when I know that you may be feeling like a little bit down or something, and then you'll post something that you're like, you're telling your head, you're telling your heart, hey, hey, here's a truth. Stick with this. I'm valuable. I can do this. You, you self-talk. And when you do that, it speaks to other people too. And it's like you're reaching and pulling them up and saying, hey, you can do this. You're okay. You're valuable. You're worthwhile. Take another step. And I love how you've done that to help other people too. We see that. I see that. I value that. Um, and then you like to have fun. Hey, well, what's wrong with the What's wrong with a good taco joke from time to time or a crazy meme that you post with toilet paper wrapped around your head? Um, <laughs> what's wrong with that, right? Exactly. And, uh, and exactly. you sure lit up the news stream with your Pokemon card opening scenarios. <laughs> Have you hit the big one yet? Um, I... When I did a tribe video like a week ago, I found my best card. You found best your card. best. Yeah. You know, I thought if I even opened a Pokemon pack, I would probably be the one that would have the big one, but I wouldn't know it. <laughs> and how disappointing that would be years from now to look back and go, yeah, you had it, Gabe, but you didn't even know it, you know? <laughs> and so I, I just stay out of that lane because I'm just too ignorant to play over there. So... Um, I just stay over here and help and uh, try to create the most seven-figure sellers that, in the hey, industry. Stick with what you're good at. And you're great at that. So, Actually, I good think I must be in. because you just hit the seven-figure seller status. And it's a club that is full of some overcomers, some people who really know how to uh, work. You may not have grown up with a work ethic, but you certainly have developed one. You really have. And you're growing in your entrepreneur mindset. I love that about you. Stick with us. We're not done yet, I imagine. 
that uh, not long from now, I'm going to be having your $5 million interview. I hope to be the one to get to do that. Um, and then the $10 million interview, that one, me and Dan Wentworth will do together because both of us will be ready to retire. <laughs> so, <laughs> and we'll say, hey, you kids, you go, go on, take it, take it away. Um, is there anything that you would like to say to someone who's struggling out there right now? Maybe they're not having the seven figure seller year. Maybe they've had one trial after another and they're feeling like they just might quit. What would you say to them? Um, I would say that um, I think you're amazing. I believe in you. I love you. I know you can do it. And if you are going through something, like reach out to me. Um, not in Tribe, but on Facebook, I've had a couple people call me that were like, you know, last year that were like going through suicidal things. Like, I don't care what you're going through. Right. Hit me up. Like, I, you know, I'm sure we can relate on some level. And I'm here to listen to you and, you know, maybe give you some guidance on to what I've been through that maybe that can help you get out of the situation you're in. But, you know, hit me up if you're going through it. Right. Like, hit me up. I'm here for you. I'm here to support you. Love on you. Um, I got your back. So, yeah, that's what I would say. That's what I'm saying. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, uh, Jameson, the same for you with us. Um, you, with course. me and Andy and Gary, I know I speak for them as well. Um, we love you and we appreciate you. Um, been a lot of chatter behind the scenes about you and we're enjoying watching you grow and we're enjoying getting the chance to love on you and value you as well. So thank you for doing this webinar with me tonight. You're My welcome. hope is that somebody sees this and uh, picks themselves up from whatever their situation or circumstance is and says, say, you know what? I can do something different. Things can change. Mm -hmm. Jameson just taught me that. That's the best but, currency too, to see that, people change. That would be the best that. currency. You know what, you, you understand when Gary and I talk about the harvest is coming in, when we see all of the success stories and that's our payday, that's our currency. When mm -hmm. we see you guys succeed, both in your business and in life. Mm -hmm. And that's the real value there, so. Yep. Secret to living is giving. That's exactly right. Thank you for spending this valuable time. Thank with you me. for having me. Thank you. All right. I'm giving you a hug. All right. Sending you one right back. Bye-bye. <laughs> right. Thank you. Bye.